uh, <laughs> sing a Friendly First Baptist Church song. Father God, that Lord, you would inhabit the praises of your people. I pray that we would leave change by the power of your spirit today, Father. And Lord, we uh, we just thank you and praise you, Father, for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. And Lord, uh, we know that all things work together for good to those that love you and are called according to your purposes, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you in this place today. In Jesus' name, and your church said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, well, um, see, you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. I did too. Every church has a person that sells insurance, it seems like. We need a hearing aid salesman. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> I've got my license this week. Well, these are perilous times and exciting times that we live in. The uh, churches are being forced to do things we've never done before. We've got the camera, and I recommend that you all forget it's here. I know last week people were waving at the camera when it wasn't turned on. People up here singing kind of had that deer in the headlight look and the camera wasn't turned on. So, kind of need a red light to let them know when they're on or something. But uh, churches back east, there was a pastor on TV, he took church outside. The state told him, you can't meet indoors. So he took all the chairs and put even the sound equipment outside. Wow. Yeah. There's all sorts of creative things you can do. The beauty of it is, is God's softening up the people of the world to hear a message, I believe. And we're the first responders. You ever think about that? Yeah. People say, why do you go to church and put yourself at risk? Well, I'm the first responder. There's first responders all over the nation that are at risk. And they're doing it to save other people's lives. We do it to save people's souls. Amen. 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 Well, Tuesday Bible study, they're doing Kingdom Dynamics. The women's meeting's coming up. It's April 11th. That's the day before Easter. Wednesday evening Bible studies continuing. The Girl Lake missions are in remissions right now. The whole town down there is locked down. The kids aren't even going out to play. Um, Fifth Sunday Sing has been canceled this month. I know that's sad, but primarily, you know, the other churches aren't assembling, so it's hard to get them to come and assemble. <laughs> We're on YouTube under Firmly First Baptist. If you need more help than that, talk to somebody computer literate. Did you want to address this? No, go ahead. Okay. We are going to cancel first service for the immediate time. 
until further notice. We're going to go to Sunday school at 9.30, it's normal time. Church, 10.30 to 11, whatever it is that we normally have church. So, <laughs> if you come next week to first service, you'll be worshiping all by yourself. <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing, we need to do that anyhow. And on the back of your bulletin is the church prayer request list. There's a whole lot more prayer requests out there probably than we know about right now. I mean, calling around talking to church members and just seeing how they're doing. And people are lonely and looking for a phone call. So I would encourage you all to do the same thing. You know, take the church prayer list or uh, membership list and run down it and, and call people and just encourage them. Let them know you love them, that we're all praying for each other and we're in this together. And we're going to be God's people no matter what happens. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've brought us to a place where I think the world has your attention, Father. Unless you speak audibly, you rely on us to go tell your people. Father, help us to be bold witnesses. Help us to take what you've trained us up to do and use it in clear and concise terms to bring the lost into the fold, Father. We pray that as people are faced with mortality and the death of loved ones, that they would turn to you. Father, we pray that your church throughout this land and the world would be prepared to deal with what we need to do. This is a great moment for your people, Father, to shine and to show your love. We thank you for this opportunity and we pray for your protective hand. Father, we, we just ask that no matter what the situation holds in the days ahead, that we will always remember one thing. You are ours and we are yours. And you love us and you loved us before the foundation of the world. You love us with a love that we can't even understand. Father, help us to shine that love into a dark and dismal world that's crying out. Father, be with us this morning and bless Pastor as he brings a message in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to do uh... Well, amen. How many of us um, could use a little more peace in our lives? Oh, okay, okay. Now, um, so I'm going to give you the verse, okay? It's out of um, Isaiah 26 3. Isaiah 26 3. And, um, you know, this is how we get peace in our life. Thou will keep him, and what kind of peace? Perfect peace, right? Now, there, there might be um, some kind of peace, but then there's perfect peace, right? Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And um, that's uh, who we need to put our trust in in these perilous times uh, today. And uh, so anyway, as we put our trust in the Lord, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not unto your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And uh, so uh, the Lord can be trusted in uh, perilous times. The Lord can still be trusted because why? Because the Lord is the same today as He was yesterday and will be forever. Now we're going to, um, uh, you know, we're going to be preaching today out of uh, the Word of God. And that's okay with everybody, right? Yes. Uh, because, um, you know, the Word of God is, uh, you know, the, the Word of God is actually more stable than the ground that you are standing on because Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. And so this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible. God's holy word. God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. I will hide its word in my heart. That I might not sin against God. I am who it says that I am. I will stand. I will proclaim. And I will believe it. As truth over all else. It is the revelation of Jesus. It is the proof of God. It is the foundation of our life. It is alive and active. In this church. And in me. Somebody say glory. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Remain standing. Lift your hands and receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift, uh, the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you peace. Perfect peace, I might add. For the glory of the Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I lift up and invoke the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, upon you. Receive the blessing of God Almighty by saying, Amen. 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 Let's, let's be seated. As we're being seated, let us stay our purpose statement together. Whatever it takes to know Jesus and to make Jesus known. And so as we make Jesus known, as we get acquainted with Jesus, we have to learn the words of Jesus, right? Uh, until the Lord changes what He has given us to preach, we will continue to preach the very words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says this, And Jesus came and spake unto them, uh, saying, How much power? All power is given unto me in heaven and where? Earth. earth. Okay, so all power is given unto Jesus in heaven and earth. It says, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Now, you know, we uh, see or hear people, uh, you know, about this uh, virus and stuff. It says, you know, it's going to be the end of the world and end of humanity and all this stuff. No, it's not. I mean, you know, it's not yet. But uh, one of these days, we are getting closer to that time, to the end of the world. But in the meantime, before the end of the world comes, uh, we're going to keep teaching and preaching Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so as, uh, as we are uh, in, the, in the countdown uh, to, to the end of the world, I will continue to teach and preach what Jesus said. Uh, this, uh, this sermon is on having the right attitude when it comes to our spiritual uh, de uh, devotion or our charitable deeds. You know, a lot of times, you know, we do, uh, we want to do charitable deeds and, and there's uh, um, organizations around the world and, and they want to say, hey, look at us. We give, uh, we, uh, we do so much for charity and look at us. We, do, we give so much to the poor and, and, uh, and they try to extract money out of you and different things like that. But our spiritual devotion needs to be to the Lord himself. And if we give to the Lord in secret, He will reward us openly. Because according to Jesus, we really can blow it when it comes down to our devotion toward God. And, and if we do these things with the wrong motivation the, and heart, some of the areas that Jesus taught us about in Matthew chapter 6 are giving, uh, praying, fasting. Those are all good things. Those are all charitable uh, you know, things. If they are handled in the right way, but if they're handled in the wrong way, uh, they can become a detriment uh, to our worship. And as I was uh, preparing uh, for this sermon, the Holy Ghost impressed on me that the judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. And Jesus taught us the right attitudes so that we might receive a blessing uh, from God and not have our reward already. Now, how many of us here want a to receive the blessing from God, right? Yes. I mean, we don't want to uh, have our reward now. We want to have God to bless us. Matthew chapter 6 is where we're going to be. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to be reading... Um, I'm going to be reading 1 through 18, Wilma, uh, because uh, I, I, uh, I, mi I missed a verse there. Matthew 6, Jesus' words, it says, take heed. Now, when, you, when uh, you hear those two words, take heed, what should you think of? Be careful, right? Take heed. Take heed that you do your alms or your charitable deeds is what alms... Uh, um, amounts to your your alms or charitable deeds before men uh, to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. And so that's uh, that's what what Jesus is saying is if you just show off uh, your charitable deeds to be uh, to be esteemed in the eyes of men, then you already have your reward. I mean, you you wanted men to esteem you, you got it. You got that. That's that's the only reward you're going to get. And so verse 2 says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, or charitable deeds, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know 
what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. I mean, if you're uh, if you're directing people to yourself rather than pointing people to God, you already have your reward. Okay? And so, uh, uh, verse 6 says, but, but when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You think your God ever gets tired of that? <laughs> you know? And uh, I think he does. That's why he's addressing it here. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things that you have need of before you ask Him. Boy, imagine that. I mean, we really think we need something, you know, and you know, we're, we're going to the Father in, in our, our secret place and saying, Lord, I really need that. And, you know, he's saying, I knew that already. I knew what you needed. Uh, but he, want, uh, he wanted you to uh, uh, ask, how many, kid, how many times have you, have you known what your kids need? Uh, not what they want necessarily, but what they need. And, uh, but you want them to ask you uh, to give it to you before uh, you, you give it to them, right? Because uh, we know what they need, and uh, your Heavenly Father knows what you need even before you ask Him. Verse 9, Jesus said, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Now, this is known as the Lord's Prayer. I mean, people can be split <coughs> doctrinally and everything, and they can come together with the Lord's Prayer, right? I mean, um, uh, I, mean I pray the Lord's Prayer. And so, uh, everybody... Now, this really isn't the Lord's Prayer, if you want the Lord's Prayer, you got to go to John chapter 17. That's the Lord's Prayer that He prayed for us. Now, this is instruction on how to pray that He's given to His disciples, that He's given to uh, the people. And so it says in verse uh, 9 here in Matthew chapter 6, After this manner therefore pray you, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, you know, right there in the, in the Lord's, uh, how he instructed us to pray, he says, keep us from evil. I mean, evil could be... Uh, uh, you know, a, 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 an army or uh, coming against us. Evil could be uh, an enemy coming against us, or evil could be the coronavirus coming against us. And so, deliver us from evil. And so, um, uh, it says this, verse fourteen: For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive men, if you if you uh, forgive not men their trespasses. Neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Uh, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear men to and they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father, we would get this. And I pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would do what Jesus said in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We need to come to the Lord in true worship that he might reward us openly. Now, uh, in uh, Hebrews eleven six, it says this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that what diligently seek him. 
And I mean, did you guys come here this morning so your lives would get worse? Or did you come expecting a blessing from God? I mean, we came expecting a blessing from God, right? I mean, and uh, God is the source of all blessings. And so if you want a blessing, you got to go to the blesser. And so um, he is a rewarder of them. Now, so when we come to the Lord, uh, we, uh, we come to him and worship the, that he might reward us openly. As Jesus was preaching this Sermon on the Mount, he was in the setting out uh, in the uh, open outside uh, the confines of a synagogue. Now, he didn't, he wasn't in the synagogue. He was out in a, a field, you know, uh, there was a lot of grass there and stuff. Uh, and a lot of times there's a lot of hypocrisy that goes on inside the confines of a church house. And we need to get alone with Jesus out somewhere where there is not that confusion sometimes. I mean, when we pray, you know, we like to pray when we come to church, but we need to pray in our closet secretly also, you see. Our devotion needs to be to the Lord. A lot of, you know, and uh, I mean, we really uh, can, can put on the dog sometimes too. I mean, uh, I mean I've had people come to church with uh, fancy, you know, like women, women come with fancy hats, uh, you know, with uh, feathers sticking out of them and, and, and you know, I'm stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, a lot of times it says, they're saying, look at me, look at me. I'm coming to worship, and I've got this, uh, these, these nice uh, clothes on. You know, I, I mean, some people, they say, well, you know, women can't cut their hair and, and different things. And, and what that is, is it's drawing uh, the attention to themselves and, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, I grew up around some people that never cut their hair, and, and the women always wore dresses. They'd be out there playing softball in a dress, you know, so what I'm saying. And, and I don't care, you know, if your hair is long and you don't have any makeup on and you have a long dress and you look like you stepped off a wagon train but you know it doesn't matter it, it matters the the attitude of the heart it matters the attitude of the heart toward Jesus amen and so um, uh, we need to get out sometime now here at Friendly First Baptist Church we try our best to keep the main thing the main thing and his name is Jesus but at the same time uh, we are a church made up of imperfect people and uh, wherever you have people there will be hypocrisy. Now Jesus told uh, the people not to act like those in the synagogue because they already had the reward. I do not know about you, but I want my reward to be from God and not from man. Uh, the reward of vain piety from man will fade away, but the reward of God will remain forever. We, I want to uh, seek the face of God that he might uh, reward me uh, with God uh, blessings. You know, Amen. We want the blessing Amen. of the Lord. Uh, you know, If it is not God given, it is man driven and we need I don't want anything that's man driven I want to have a God bless my life I want to have God bless my life alone yes, sir. Jesus told the people take heed that they did not their alms or their charitable deeds before men and alms are, are equivalent to righteous acts or charitable deeds it could be worship or it could be giving or it could be fasting it could be anything else that we do externally there are obviously others that observe us in a church setting doing these things, but it comes down to what our motive is behind our deeds that really counts with God. Jesus warned about the danger of hypocrisy. In Matthew 6, 2, he says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue or in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. The sin of using religion to cover up a sin. A, a hypocrite is not a person who falls short of his high ideals, who occasionally sins, because all of us experience these failures at times. A hypocrite deliberately uses religion to cover up his sins and to promote his own gains. And there are a lot of those out there today. You know, uh, we've seen them television evangelism, uh, evangelists fall and, and different things. They're using religion a lot of times to cover up uh, their own sins. The Greek word hypocrite originally meant an actor who wears a mask. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people out there that are wearing the mask of religion that do not have their heart right with God. 
The righteousness of the Pharisees uh, was insincere and dishonest. They practiced their religion for the applause of men, not, from the, not for the reward of God. But true righteousness must come from within. We should attest ourselves to see whether we are sincere and honest in our Christian commitment or are we trying to draw men's attention to ourselves. Giving, praying, fasting, the use of wealth, all these are important spiritual disciplines that, uh, that done the right way will incite the blessing of God in our lives. But let us be careful how we do these things. Jesus assumed that those listening were doing these things because he did not say, if you fast or if you pray. He says, but when you fast, when you pray. So, I mean, they, the people were doing spiritual things. <clears throat> also, Jesus told us not to use vain repetitions as the heathen do. You know, I mean, um, there's uh, some places you can go and, you know, the, the priest will tell you, hey, go say, you know, ten of these and five of these and you'll be okay. You know, is God satisfied with that? No. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, he says. Um, uh, for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking. You know, if I say the Lord's Prayer enough times, maybe I can gain some God points. You know, no, it's not how it works. It's not how much we say, but how sincere we are in our hearts before the Lord. Because our Father knows that we have what we have need of before we even ask. Now this speaks of the sovereignty of God. Nothing takes God by surprise. He knows our past and He knows our future. He knows what we have need of. You know? Um, Jeremiah 29, uh, 11 through 13. Now I'm going to be reading this out of the amplified version of the Bible this morning because I think it's what says it kind of good. Uh, it says, For I know the thoughts. And plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. Then you will call upon me. And you will pray to me. And I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire uh, for and require me. As a, ver as a vital necessity and find me when you search for me with how much of your heart? All. All of your heart. See, God has plans for us. God, I think, I think God has this, has this uh, supply of blessings laid up. He says, you know, I, I'd really like to, to give Danny back there this blessing. You know, I'd like to give Woody and Sharon these blessings, but, you know, I'm held up from giving them because of how they're asking and how they're acting. I'm not saying anything personally, you know, about you guys, but I mean, you know, I could be like that, you know. And so, uh, it, uh, um, God has plans and God has blessings laid up for us. Again, the prophet Jeremiah does not suggest a mere casual relationship between you and your God now, I do not like a mere casual relationship between me and my wife. I mean, uh, I like that relationship to be hot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and hopefully she likes it to be hot too, you know. I mean, I, I mean, casual relationships are just like, you know, they're not any good, right? I mean, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the love of your life, right? Especially when it comes to Jesus. Right? I mean, he's not looking for no casual relationship. I mean, in the Revelation, he told the church of the Laodiceans, he says, you guys aren't even cold or hot. You're just kind of lukewarm. You just kind of got a casual relationship with me. And he says, uh, you know, when, when a church is lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And God does not want a casual relationship with his church. God wants a red-hot relationship with His church. God wants to be in them and them in Him. 
And, you know, when we pray uh, to the Lord, you know, uh, we don't need to, to just um, come and act like we're religious. We need to really pray to the Lord. After Jesus told us not to use vain repetition like the pagans do, he gave, he gave us instructions on how to pray. <clears throat> this is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer, but actually it is the instruction to us on how to pray. And people have made this into vain repetitions too. People who differ on a hundred points of doctrine are linked by their common use of the Lord's Prayer. But because it is used so widely and so often, it is easy for us to merely repeat it or say it or listen to it without really praying it or meaning it. It could actually become vain repetition. You see, I'm going to give you some points on the Lord's Prayer here. You know, uh, and uh, what does the Lord say? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I cannot say our, like our Father. I cannot say our if I live in my own watertight spiritual compartment. If I think that there is a special place reserved for me only. See, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm the, only, I'm, I'm the most spiritual thing God has ever seen. <laughs> Man, don't think that. Because you're fixing to fall. You know, we say, Our Father. I cannot say Father if I do not demonstrate in that relationship in my daily life. I cannot say, Which are in heaven, if I am so occupied with earthly things that my eyes never look up. I cannot say, How would be thy name if I, who am called by his name, am not dependent on him for his holiness? I cannot say, Thy kingdom come if I am content to do nothing about it myself. I cannot say, Thy will be done if I'm questioning, resentful, or disobedient to his will for me. I cannot say, On earth as it is in heaven, if I am not prepared to devote my life here to his his service. I cannot say, give us this day our daily bread if I'm living on past experience or cheating on my income tax. Uh oh. I cannot say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors if I harbor grudge against anyone. I cannot say, lead us not into temptation if I deliberately place myself or remain in a position where I'm likely to be tempted. Temptation has to be handled in two or three layers before you place yourself in the position where you are forced to make a decision that you will regret, regret for the rest of your life. You see, a lot of times, you know, people, they say, well, you know, I, I kind of like this temptation a little bit, so I'm going to kind of go to the next level. We need to handle temptations two or three levels before it, it gets to the point where we have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those decisions are made, and we regret those decisions the rest of our life because we didn't handle temptation the right way. Way. I cannot say deliver us from evil if I'm not prepared to fight in the spiritual realm with the weapon of prayer. I cannot say thine is the kingdom if I do not accord the king uh, the discipline, obedience of a loyal subject. I cannot say thine is the power if I fear what men may do or what my neighbors may think. I cannot say thine is the glory if I'm seeking glory for myself. I cannot say forever and ever if my horizon is bounded by the things of time. I cannot say amen if I do not also add cost what it may. For to say this prayer honestly will cost you everything. Mm. That's what it will cost us. You see salvation is free. But it'll cost you your life. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just want to add God to their portfolio. So they can just kind of take him out and use him when they need him. No. That's not how God wants it. Salvation will cost you your life. You have to come to God and say, I surrender. 
I confess my sins before you, Lord. And I don't want to uh, be directed my, by myself. Uh, I want to receive you as my personal Savior. And it will cost you your life. But in return, God gives you His life. And we have new life in Christ Jesus. If any man is in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. All things are passed away and all things become new. I know, you know, a lot of times in our churches, we want to put a band-aid on sin and different things like that. Well, it's not, it's, it's not the renunciation of one sin. It's not the renunciation of 50 sins that will save your soul. It's the renunciation of all sin that will save your soul. You know, if you hold, if you hide but one of these accursed vipers in your heart uh, like a hole in, in, in a ship, it will eventually sink thy soul. That was a quote from Spurgeon mm. when they used to preach. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Hey, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can give up this or I can give up that. A lot of people, you know, a lot of churches that says, well, we have, uh, we have uh, rehab programs or, or we have, you know, drunk programs or, or something like that. I got a program for you. It's called the Word of God. Amen. I got a program for you. When you give your life to Jesus, you give all of your life to Jesus and He takes you lock, stock, and barrel and He gives you His life. And after that, you are a new creature of Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Yeah. Yes, sir. You see... A lot of people want to just put a band-aid on sin. They say, well, I've got a problem with alcohol, and I'll always have that problem. You know, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You know, when God saved me, he's, he, he uh, uh, turned a loudmouth drunk into a loudmouth preacher. <laughs> I'm not going to go back to being a loudmouth drunk. Because old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. You see, it is not merely a prayer that we should say, but wholly meditate on the, on the, and really pray to, to our Father. As I was thinking on these things, there's a verse of Scripture in Revelation 19.7. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Or the wife has prepared herself. You see, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. See, he's, a, he's preparing a place for us. And that place, it's going to be outside the realms of evil. It's going to be outside the realms of sickness and viruses and, and all this stuff. It's going to be a perfect place. He's preparing a place for us. And you know, if He goes and prepares a place for us, He's coming to get us. And her wife has made herself ready. Or the wife has prepared herself. The reward that I want is to be glorified with Christ. My bridegroom, uh, my uh, bridegroom. If we will do these things in secret, he will reward us openly. Now I'm going to ask you today: Have you made yourself ready for Jesus? Because you know a lot of people say, "Well, I'm religious, and that's not what I ask." Oh, I'm a good person. That's not what I ask. Have you made yourself ready for Jesus? See, Isaiah the prophet says, "Prepare you." The way of the Lord. See, you have to do some preparation. You have to say, hey, I'm going to make a decision where I'm giving my whole life to Jesus. You see? And the devil is sitting right there and says, oh, no, you don't want to do that. You'll become one of them religious Jesus freaks. Well, praise God. <laughs> it's better than being dead. And trespasses and sins. It's better than being dead physically because, because I, I tell you what, when, when, when God saved me, I was trying my best to destroy myself through sin. Would have made it too. If it wasn't for the grace of God. But there were some things I had to do. I had to prepare to 
have my mind changed. I had to go to church. You know, it's, it's funny. Every time I've been backslid, I know probably none of you have ever been backslid, but I have, you know, a couple times. Every time I have been away from God, God calls me to do two things. Go back to church and read the Bible. The two physical things that we hold in our hand, the Word of God, the body of Christ, right? I mean, he's, he's called me to do that. I mean, every time. And so, we've made ourselves ready. Have you made yourself ready for Jesus? You see, um, before the Lord will come and judge the world, He must first judge His church. God is holy and just and must punish sin. So one of my prayers is, Lord, in Your judgment, remember mercy. I'm going to close with this, 1 Peter 4, 17-19. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if, and if it first begin with us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner appear? Wherefore let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator in Jesus' name. Amen. God wants to save you. Yes, sir. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I mean, uh, it isn't repentance. No, repentance is a condition of belief. You see, first of all, you have to believe. He that believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You mean it's not uh, going to church and, and uh, putting on a churchy smile? No. It's belief in Jesus. See? Now, belief in Jesus will give you a churchy smile, right? <laughs> um, and uh, so... Um, and so I, I know that uh, when, when I don't have my, uh, you know, my smile on, I've, uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, something else besides Jesus. Now, thou wilt keep him in what perfect peace his mind is stayed on thee, right? And so uh, God's going to keep us in peace. God will keep us. He's, uh, no man is able to you know, pluck him out of the Father's hand. I just want to ask us this morning, is there one here this morning who wants to give their life, and I'm, I'm talking their whole life, lock, stock, and barrel, so you know, to, to the Lord Jesus. And I, I guarantee you that if you do that, God will give you His life. That's a hard decision to make. And because I know a lot of people, they sit in the, uh, the, the pews, and, and uh, I know a lot of times, you know, I had, to, I had to go through a lot of years before I actually made that decision and then when I finally did make the decision, it was really the mercy and the grace of God. I really didn't make it myself. I mean, uh, you know, I, I tried to make it myself a lot of years, and then finally the Lord saved me by His grace. But, you know, I had to prepare my heart, and uh, my parents had to pray for me, and different things like that, and, and people had to pray for me over the years, and, and uh, finally God... Uh, Save me by His grace. And uh, that's, that's what I'm asking. I know that, uh, for instance, Christian, when he came in to my office, I mean, he, he laid it all down, lock, stock, and barrel. And I tell you, he's, he's a fine example of, uh, of, of a Christ follower, you know. And, um, but I, he had to lay it all down. I had to lay it all down. You know, Mike and Sandy had to lay it all down. Todd and Julie had to lay it all down, you know. We have to lay it all down. You see, God just doesn't put... He's not, not a, a, a lifestyle enhancer. He is a soul saver. He will save your soul. And uh, when He saves your soul, then you're a new creature. When He saves your soul, things aren't the same. 
What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart, the old song says. So, uh, you might just go to the Lord and say, Lord, hey, I'm a sinner. I, I don't know what to tell you. And, uh, but I want to uh, give my life to you. I, uh, and, you know, you can do it in secret. I mean, I, you know, don't make a big show about it because that's just a show anyway sometimes. Just go to the Lord and say, Lord, I want you. I want, your, I want to have rewards from you. I want you to change my life because be quite honest with you, I've done a pretty good job of messing up my life. If, I, if, if I'm telling the truth. And Lord, so I'm giving this messed up life to you. And you know what Isaiah the prophet said? He gave me beauty for the ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, that we might be trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You know? And so if it's, if it's not God-given, it's man-driven, I want it to be a God decision. I want it to be a decision between you and God. Not joining a church necessarily or anything like that. The decision has to come from your heart to God's heart. And uh, let's bow our heads and close our eyes just for a minute. Is there one here that just says, you know, Pastor Curtis, I want to give my life to Jesus this morning. And I want to uh, lock, stock, and barrel. And I want to... Uh, do things God's way because I've made a mess of my own life and I want to do things God's way and I want to ask Him and I know I don't uh, deserve Him but uh, we don't deserve Him anyway so I'm asking the Lord to come into my heart and life and you can wave at me or something like that if uh, that's your decision this morning and I'll be praying for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, um, Lord, I, I believe that, that uh, you are God. And I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And Lord, I just want to ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm confessing my sins before you. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, you would save me by your mercy and grace. Lord, there's nothing I've done that deserving of you, Lord. As a matter of fact, the only thing I could bring to your salvation is the sin that makes it necessary. I, I can't bring any goodness. I can't bring any religion. I can't bring anything like that. All I can bring you is a broken life. All I can bring you is a, a garment of heaviness, Lord. And Lord, I just pray, Father, right now, that, Lord, you would do something miraculous in my life as I commit my life to you, Lord. Because, Lord, you're the creator of the soul anyway. And, Lord, I, come, I now come back to you. And, Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if, if you just prayed that prayer uh, with me, and you meant it in your heart before God. You just made the most important decision of your life here on earth. You just made the most important decision. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And you can't go to the Father by being good. You can't go to the Father by, you know, religious acts. You go to the Father... Through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Lord, He's the only way. That's right. There's no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved than that of Jesus Christ. And so uh, that's, the, that's what we preach. That's the gospel message. That's the good news. And so uh, God bless you and your decisions. If you need to get a hold of us here at Friendly First Baptist Church uh, for prayer, for anything, uh, post office box 617 uh, Fernley, Nevada, 89408, and, and send your request in. We'll put them on the uh, computer, uh, Facebook. I'm, I'm kind of computer illiterate, but uh, Pastor Todd, he's, he'll put them on there for us. And, 
and different things. So uh, God bless you until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Amen.